Hello, I am Seamus Dunhu of EVE University, and this is episode 1 of How to Survive EVE Online as refilmed for the Creus release. Today is Saturday, August the 2nd, 2014. Before I begin, I want to give a shout out to Paul Suarez Jr., who is the creator of the YouTube video series How to Survive Minecraft. He has since renamed it Minecraft Survive and Thrive. His series got me to start playing Minecraft and also inspired me to make my own series about a different game that I play, EVE Online. EVE Online is a massive multiplayer online game created and maintained by Crowd Control Productions of Reykjavik, Iceland. It is a space-themed player versus player-centric game uh, with player versus environment elements. The purpose of this video series is to demonstrate the beginning stages of EVE Online gameplay to people who have just started playing the game or who might be interested in getting a trial account or buddy account. This series will also teach what I believe are reasonable good practices for new players just getting started in the game. These are not necessarily best practices, as best practices sometimes varies by opinion, playstyle, and what level of risk you're willing to accept. For this series, I will be playing in a relatively safe and cautious manner, though other playstyles are both possible and viable. During this series, you'll see me skip through a lot of in-game tutorial text for the sake of brevity. I'll only go into depth if I feel that the text is missing something important, or if the text is discussing something really important. Uh, when you actually play, you will want to at least click through the tutorial windows, uh, or take the time to read through the tutorial windows, because they will sometimes spawn free stuff for you, and that will help you along. So without further ado, let's get started. When you log into the game for the first time, you will be presented with the character first stage of the character creation screen, where you choose the race of your character. These races are simply the different descendants of humanity, and ultimately it doesn't matter which race, bloodline, gender, or whatnot that you choose for your character, because you can cross-train into any other races, ships, and equipment. Uh, if you're a role player, then you will want to care about your race, bloodline, and such, because it will be part of your backstory. Uh, if you care about the appearance of your avatar, then again, these same choices will have an effect. And you can re sculpt some aspects of character creation later, but not all of them. So, if you care about how your character looks, you may want to take the time to do it right the first time. For this series, though, I am going to create an Amarian character. The Amar Empire is the largest and oldest of the four empires. Ruled by a mighty empress, Amar is a theocratic society capable of selfless acts and unspeakable evil, all in the name of their god. All right, click next. Bloodline, gender, click next. And you have a series of choices that you can choose. You are a capsuleer. Here are the neural jacks where you connect to your ship's computer. I'm just going to randomize all. Good enough. Click next. Uh, background, you can change background, the lights, the poses, and whatnot. This is fine. I don't really... Uh, let me even out the pose. Yeah, there we go. Click a camera icon. Click next. Uh, ancestry is also a detail only relevant to role players, doesn't have any effect on your skills or whatnot. Uh, your education determines which NPC starter corporation you start off in. For the Amar, that's Imperial Academy, Hedian University, and Royal Amar Institute. Uh, if you've got a friend who's been playing EVE Online longer than you have, and your friend is going to meet you in-game, you want to tell your friend what race and school that you're choosing. That way they can meet you in the appropriate solar system. Uh, for this series, I am going to pick Imperial Academy 
for reasons relating to the market, which will become clear later. Uh, but it doesn't matter which school you pick. Uh, for your name, the name is the funny thing here. You've got two fields for it. Uh, what the game does, it will take whatever is in the first field, append a space, and then append whatever is in the second field. The first field can itself also have a space, but the second field may not. So the first field, tutorial guide, and the second field I type Dunahoo. What the game is going to do is tutorial space guide space Dunahoo, and that's how it will construct the name. If you leave the second field blank, the game will automatically randomize. I think the game will automatically randomize for you and then append that onto the rest of the name. So if your name only has one word, you will want to type that one word down in here. There's a 12 character limit and leave the top field blank. In any case, check availability. And if that's a green check mark, uh, you will click finalize. The default view is you're going to be in station and your avatar will be walking around in your captain's quarters, which is relatively new. It was introduced in the Incarna expansion about two or three years ago. Uh, most players, however, are accustomed to the ship hangar view, uh, in some cases because it's less resource intensive. I tend to prefer the classic ship hangar view just because. Uh, so let me enter the ship hangar. And let me move this here and here. Here are your chat windows. You've got access to local channel, which is chatting with everybody who's in your solar system. Uh, corp chat for the starting NPC corporation that you start off in. You will always have a corp chat. So if you later join a player corporation, uh, known in other MMOs as guilds, join a player corporation, your corpse chat will switch to the corp chat for your new guild. And you've got rookie help, which you will have access to for 30 days. Uh, but to start off with, let's click and drag the local chat tab out and move it off to the left here. Let's make it a narrow window and let's make it tall. Go to the people icon, show compact member list. Typically you only care about a who's in the solar system with you and the local channel user list will tell you that. So there's 36 characters including myself in local right now. In your starting off in your early days you usually don't care too much but later on you're going to want to make, pay more attention to who's in local with you for whatever reason. Uh, this bar on the left is your Neocom. A lot of interface elements will be buried under here somewhere and you can reconfigure your Neocom. So you can right-click an element, remove. You can also go to the Eve menu and click and drag it from the Eve menu back into the Neocom. It will always be present in the Eve menu. Certain elements of the Neocom are static and cannot be changed. This is the time and calendar access at the bottom, the Eve menu, your character portrait, your skill training bar, and your chat channel uh, controls. Everything else on the Neocom can be reconfigured. Uh, let's bring, go to the Eve menu, and just because I'm a creature of habit, I'm going to want the ship hanger and the open the hanger floor, also called the item hanger. Drag this down here. Make it a little smaller. Open the ship hanger. I can merge windows together by clicking and dragging one title bar onto another title bar until it highlights and then let go. Now it's two tabs of the same window. I can also drag this out here like that. Uh, let me go to the escape menu. General settings, easy theme selection, steel gray. Uh, general settings, open radial menu with middle mouse button. Uh, display and graphics, I'm going to turn off camera shake. Alright, now we're ready to get started. Uh, 
to start on our first tutorial mission, we click on the Agents tab, and we click on the Show con the Start Conversation button with Aura, our ship's computer. And Aura wants us to go out into space in our capsule here. All right. There's our capsule. Aura wants us to undock our capsule, go out into space, grab a ship, uh, grab something else, and then come back. So we're going to click Accept. And we're going to close. And undock. You can left click and drag to turn your rotate your camera around. Mouse wheel will zoom in and out slightly. Uh, if you left, if you click and drag both the left and right mouse buttons at the same time and move up or down, that will zoom in and out a lot faster. Uh, control space bar to full stop for a moment. This window here is your overview. It is a spreadsheet that shows you what is in space around you. I like to make this a big window since it's kind of important to know what is in space around you. And let's position that here. Let's move the selected item panel all the way into the corner and make it a little bit bigger. And what we need to do now is travel to our mission location. Uh, in EVE Online, you, move, you, you generally use three different methods for getting from one place to another. Uh, in your immediate vicinity, you can double left click to have your ship move in a particular direction at sublight speed. You can right click and go to Agent Missions, covering the basics, encounter dead space, warp to location. You can use your warp drive to cover interplanetary distances at faster than light speeds. Look, there's a planet. Look, there's a planet far receding behind us. So your all ships have a warp drive, and you can travel at faster than light speeds with the warp drive from one point in the solar system to another point in the same solar system. Finally, there are stargates, which are used to cover interstellar distances. We'll demonstrate that momentarily. Uh, well, several minutes from now, probably. So we've dropped out of warp, and there's an empty ship waiting for us. It's an Imperer called Imperer, which means there's no player in it right now. We right-click and board ship. Now we need to proceed deeper into the mission, and this acceleration gate will take us deeper into the mission. And we right-click the acceleration gate and activate gate. You can also middle mouse hold down the middle mouse button to bring up the radial menu. I've changed it to middle mouse button. It's left mouse button by default, but because you left click and drag to turn your camera, sometimes you accidentally left click and drag on top of something. And if you didn't change it to middle mouse button, that means uh, you're bringing up the radial menu. Kind of annoying, but anyway. So there's the cargo rig. You can left click on it, you, or you can right click and open cargo, or you can just click open cargo in the selected item box. And your ship is too far away to grab anything from it. So you need to get within 2500 meters, which your ship will automatically do since you told it to open the cargo. So we'll get in range to do that first. And the first window to show up will be the Amar cargo bay, as indicated here on the left sidebar. We loot all, and the object is now moved into our main cargo hold. Uh, the other way to do it is you can open cargo, you can open your own cargo hold, and just left click and drag from one window to the other. But in any case, we have what we need, so we need to return to station. So we left click the station and we click dock. Oh, by the way, if the cargo rig happens to be in your face and in the way, uh, you will need to double left click in space to move around the cargo rig uh, before you can go to warp to the station. Otherwise, you're just going to keep bumping into the cargo rig and bumping into the cargo rig and bumping into the cargo rig and you're never going to get into warp. Once you're clear of obstructions, you can go to warp to the station. I've clicked dock, 
so my ship will go to warp. We'll align to warp first. Then actually go into warp. Twiddle thumbs while we wait. We're a little too far to dock, so we cover the rest of the distance at sub-light speed, and now we dock. And we start conversation with Aura, complete the mission, and we're given a repair system skill book. Uh, go to your Neocom and look for this thin black bar, this thin empty bar underneath your character portrait. And that will bring up your training queue. If you missed and you clicked on your character portrait instead, you can just click open training queue from here. Either method works. So in other games, you become more powerful by killing monsters or going on completing quests or doing crafting or whatnot and gaining experience points. And as, as when you get enough experience points, there's a level, a single level uh, associated with the character you increase in level, and new and better abilities uh, are opened to you. EVE Online works differently. There is no single level associated with your character. Rather, you have a whole bunch of different skills which do different things, and these skills have levels. You can right-click this skill and inject a skill book, and we now have repair systems under the armor category. Drag that in, click Apply. And this will start the skill training process. You will slowly accumulate skill points over time. So we have three, four, five, six. Uh, it's a little bit slow, uh, but it does do it over time. And it will, and you will accumulate skill points with, if you're doing something, if you're not doing something, if you're shooting stuff, not shooting stuff, if you're mining asteroids, not mining asteroids, if you're logged into the game, if you're not logged into the game, if you're out at the movies with your significant other, you are still training skill points in the background. This is a background process. You don't need to babysit it all the time. So one of the things you can do is queue up additional skills to take over when your current skill has finished. So we're going to drag in Amar Frigate 3 and drag in Amar Frigate 4 and click Apply. We now have a skill queue that's going to take 2 days and 50 minutes if it's left alone. Uh, so we're going to be training skills for the next 2 days. You come back tomorrow, you will have trained a day's worth of skills in the meantime. It's a background process. Assuming, of course, you queued up skills to be trained. If you left your skill queue empty, you're not accumulating skill points. So always try to have something uh, in training at all times. I'm gonna click apply because I'm paranoid and close this window. Let's request the next mission. And Aura wants to go to a particular location and destroy some stuff. Uh, so we're going to accept this mission, and we're going to close this window. Uh, make sure you click through the tutorial windows, because they're going to spawn free stuff for you. Alt-F to open your fitting window. I'm going to click these headers to expand them. And we're going to drag in our laser and our civilian armor repair. Uh, Let's keep clicking through until it gives you a multi-frequency crystal, and we're going to drag that in as well. Now we undock. If you're docked in station when the tutorial windows give you stuff, they'll be in your item hanger. If you were in space at the time, uh, then they'll show up in your ship's cargo hold, as accessed from this button down here. 
So, combat basics, warp to location. Warp drive active. This section down here is your heads up display. I like to call it the capacitor donut. This is your capacitor. Uh, this is the energy that you use to activate certain kinds of modules. And these three are your health bars. Uh, shield at the top, armor in the middle, structure on the bottom. If your structure is reduced to zero, your ship is destroyed, and your capsule ejects from the ship. Your capsule can also be attacked. If your capsule is reduced to zero, then you are pod killed. Your capsule or your pod. It's, it's also called your pod. So if you're pod killed, then your consciousness is transferred to what is called a medical clone, and I will explain that a little later in this episode. Here we have the acceleration gate. Let's activate the gate. Warp drive active. All right, I'm bumping into the acceleration gate itself. Control space bar. Let's turn the camera up. Double click straight up. Let's get some distance. Now we activate the gate. Warp drive active. All right. Here we are. There's the fuel depot. Go control left click the fuel depot and we're gonna tap F1 to start shooting. Now our laser has a fall off within 2,500 meters. That means it's gonna have a hard time hitting anything 2,500 meters away or further. So let's get a little closer to the fuel depot. 3,300 meters is a little far for this puny little weapon. Now we're hitting it. it we've taken off the shields, we've taken off the armor. We've taken off the structure and it explodes. And our ship has taken some damage. So control spacebar for a moment. Uh, so the shields have been wiped out. They'll recharge on their own. The armor has taken some damage. Armor and structure do not regenerate on their own. You need a module to fix that, or you need a station repair shop to fix that. So you can click on the armor repairer. By the way, this is by default, this is hotkeyed as control F1, and your laser is hotkeyed as just plain old F1. And the armor repairer will consume capacitor energy to patch up your armor. If you don't have enough capacitor energy, you can't repair your armor. But the capacitor, like the shields, will regenerate on their own. Uh, we're supposed to go through the acceleration gate. Uh, you need to be within 2,500 meters. Activate the gate, and if your ship is too far away, it will get closer. Alright, the armor has been patched up. We can turn off this module. And there is a little red plus sign. That is an enemy target. Control left click and right click approach. Control left click is the target lock. Uh, a lot of your weapons. A lot of modules require a target lock. Basically, anything that's going to work on another, a ship other than your own typically needs a target lock. And we're now closer than 2,500 meters, so we can hit F1, and we are shooting. Shields. It's taking shields. Now it's in armor. Still in armor, and now it is in structure. And it explodes. And... There is the wreck. Uh, left click, you can target lock either by control left click or by t clicking this button. Both methods work. Approach and start shooting. You can open fire from beyond fall off range. You're just going to miss a lot. If 
by the way, as an Amarian, you're typically going to use laser weapon systems. Uh, your guns will use frequency crystals as an ammunition, but they're not expended. Not your basic frequency crystals anyway. Um, so really you're just using capacitor energy. So your lasers will keep firing as long as you've got the capacitor energy for it. If you're using missiles, if you're using hybrids such as railguns or blasters, if you're using projectiles, meaning artillery or auto cannons, then you have to have uh, charges loaded into the module, and those charges will be expended, and you have to reload the module when your magazine runs empty. And you're reloading it from your ship's cargo hold. Lasers, you don't have to worry about that. And skill training completed while I was flapping my jaw. So now we have repair systems Docking level one. Permission requested. Docking request accepted. So we're going to talk to Aura. Complete the mission. And we are given a small armor repairer one. We can right click this and show info. And the show info window tells us that as a requirement it needs mechanics level 1, which we started off with, and repair systems level 1, which we just finished training. So, if we go to our fitting window, let's drag this out. The civilian armor repairer will consume 3 gigajoules of capacitor to repair 6 hit points of armor, and it does this every 3 seconds. The small armor repairer 1 consumes 40 gigajoules of capacitor to restore 69 hit points of armor, and we'll do this every six seconds. It's a much better module, so we're going to throw this in. All right. Let's get this out of the way. Uh, let's close the fitting window. Aura now wants us to go to a particular location, get an item, and come back. And this time, the location is in a different solar system. Right now, we're in Shaven, whereas the destination is in Arbaz. So we're going to right-click, set destination. Then we're going to right-click the link for the station and add waypoint. Set destination and uh, set destination will wipe out any existing waypoints you have and set it as your first waypoint. Add waypoint will just simply add another waypoint onto your existing route. If you don't have any waypoints, then set des destination and add waypoint to exactly the same thing. So let's click accept. And we're going to close and we're going to undock. When a mission wants you to go somewhere, it's kind of important to understand where the mission is sending you. So this Stargate icon is yellow because that's the next Stargate in our route. So we click the Stargate and we click, hold on, we click the Stargate, we click jump. Warp drive active. Our ship aligns to warp. Now it's actually going into warp. So as I said before, you can travel at sub-light speeds, or you can use your warp drive to travel at faster than light speeds on interplanetary distances. But if you want to go to another solar system, that is, you want to cover an interstellar distance, you need a Stargate, typically. There are other modes of transportation, but these will be the three most common for most people in EVE Online. And we are hurled across the light years to another, or possibly only one light year, to another solar system. Now we are in Arbaz. And we can right click empty space, agent missions, the academy, encounter, warp to location. Or I could go here, agent missions, the academy, and warp to location. Either of those will work. Uh, by the way, if anything in this section is missing, it's probably hidden under these icons, so you can click the icons to show or hide any information that you consider important. 
or not important. I forgot to explain the yellow exclamation mark. Uh, don't worry about it. I'll uh, explain it to you probably next episode. So here we are at the mission location. And the thing you need to get the object out of is here. So just click on it and open cargo. Or you can right click on it and open cargo. Either will work. And the tutorial text will also introduce you to the look at function where you can click on any anything. Hold on, let's grab our document. There we go. So you can left click on anything, you can look at, and your camera will orbit that object. Uh, you can right click on something and look at. That also works. Uh, or you can right click on something in your overview and look at. You can also click the look at button in the selected item box. You can also right click an empty space to look at my ship which will reset your camera. But anyway, it's time to go back to Shaven. Warp drive active. Uh, the tutorial text will tell you about the Interbus ship identification system, which, if you want to click on that, will give you a chart of the various ships for a given race, and you can click on the different races up here. I'm not going to waste your time with that. You can uh, you can browse that uh, at your leisure. And here we are for the Stargate back to Shaven. Stargates are always paired. So this is the same Stargate link we just jumped through. When we arrived in Arbaz, this was the Stargate. And here we are back in Shaven next to the same Stargate that we departed through. Click on the station, click Dock. And Aura is going to tell you you can always use your journal, the Agents tab, the Mission sub tab, to find information about any mission that you're on. So you can read the details. So for example here, this is a green check mark because we needed to do something at a particular location in Arbaz, and we've done that. We needed to get a cargo. It's in our cargo hold right now. Look, there is our cargo hold. There it is. So we have that. All that's missing is to bring this thing back to the station. Right. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. So now that we're actually docked in station, uh, you can everything's green check marks. You can complete the mission. And when we request the next mission, Aura wants us to move something from where we are now to another station called Depari, where we will find additional tutorial missions. So I'm going to right-click Depari to Imperial Academy and set destination. And we're going to click accept. And here are the clearance papers we need to bring with us. With any courier mission, it is important to make sure that the courier cargo is on board your ship. So if I double left click in the ship hangar view, that opens up my ship's cargo hold. Here, let me make this smaller. There we go. Tutorial guide Dunhu's Imperer. I drag in, I have to make sure that my uh, courier cargo is in the cargo hold. Otherwise, I'm going to leave it behind when I dock from the station. We're not staying here, so let's also take our civilian armor repairer with us. All right. And let's undock. Now, the EVE Online universe is big. Known space, which is connected by the Stargate network. has 5,000 solar systems. Here, let me move the world map control panel up here, and let me click on Flatten. 
So this is known space. These are the solar systems connected by the Stargate network. There's also something called wormhole space, which I will not cover in this series. Uh, but if we select, right click empty space, select current solar system, and zoom in with the mouse wheel, look, that's where we are. Shaven, and we need to go at Arbaz and then Dipari. There's no direct connection between Shaven and Dipari, so we need to go through Arbaz to get there. The Stargate network is pretty big. It can take you an hour, depending upon where you're going from, or two, maybe a couple of hours. If you're expecting to get shot at along the way, might be longer, you might not get there at all. Depends on where you're going. But once you have a route set, uh, the high Stargates are highlighted for you. Uh, the tutorial will tell you about something called the autopilot, which is this button down here. Autopilot and you can let the autopilot fly your ship uh, along your uh, along your route to your destination. To there is a problem warp with the autopilot, however. When you warp to a stargate or a station, you usually drop out of warp no further away than two kilometers. This is slightly problematic for s stations because you need to get a little closer to dock, but for stargates you only need to be within two and a half kilometers to jump through. So if you tell your ship manually, if you manually tell your ship to jump through something, uh, you'll drop out of warp next to stargate and you'll jump through. But if your autopilot is flying your ship for you, your ship will always drop out of warp 15 kilometers short of the uh, short of the next stargate or station. So now we're 13 kilometers away from that gate. Uh, and if we were in low security, if we were in dangerous areas of space, we could be shot at and killed while we're slow boating towards that stargate. It's a lot harder to catch us if we're uh, warping to the gate at zero. Uh, there are different dangers associated with that, which I probably won't cover in this series. Uh, but autopiloting to a Stargate leaves you much more vulnerable. So I don't advise autopilot travel unless you're traveling through high security space, no valuable cargo in your cargo hold. For now, I'm going to turn off the autopilot. I'm going to click on Depari and jump. Warp drive active. Now, earlier I mentioned skill points and medical clones. If your ship is reduced to zero structure, your ship is destroyed. Your capsule or your pod ejects from your ship. Capsule and pod are referred to the same thing. If your pod is destroyed, that is if your pod's reduced to zero structure, then your pod killed. And your consciousness is transferred to your medical clone. And you wake up in a new body and you can get right back out into space again. Uh, the problem is that medical clones only protect a certain number of skill points. Uh, the clone grade alpha, which you always start off with, covers 900,000 skill points by default. Uh, right now, we only have 56,000 skill points, uh, as shown up here. So a clone grade alpha will protect all of our skill points. If you're ever pod killed, and your medical clone doesn't cover your skill points, you lose 5% of the excess. So if you had 2 million skill points, and you only had 900,000 uh, protected, and you were pod killed, that's 1.1 million in excess. 5% of that is 55,000 skill points. You would lose 55,000 skill points upon being pod killed. So whenever you get pod killed, you want to make sure that you have enough skill points to that you want to make sure you have a good enough medical clone Talking to cover your skill points requested. which I'll show you as soon as we dock in the station Docking request accepted So Here's the medical win medical services. Here's the medical window. You cover 900,000 skill points with clone grade alpha. You can upgrade the clone 
to cover more skill points. And the longer you've been skill training on your character, the more skill points you have, the more expensive your medical clones will get. All right. So whenever you're pod killed, always make sure that your medical clone you upgrade your medical clone right away. You don't have to worry about that as a new player until you start getting up to about 800,000 skill points or so, at which point you may want to upgrade to a clone beta. So just keep that in mind. Uh, let me see. I'll tell you about the market next episode. And get this out of the way. Uh, so let's talk to Aura as an agent and complete everything's green check marks. So we complete the mission, or it takes the clearance papers, and we are done. So these, so this is a career funnel hub, and these are the other five tutorial mission chains that I will be covering in the How to Survive EVE Online series. In the next episode, we will get started on the exploration chain. In the meantime, thank you for watching.